Argum ER is really not an offer yet for an international customer. <clears throat> it's currently under development with the United States Navy. Uh, they have yet to make a, what I would consider, international export approval process for the Argum ER capability, but we're continuing to work with the Navy to mature that option for international customers in the future. Uh, the legacy program, Argum, uh, essentially has an anti-radiation guided missile with a digital receiver set coupled with a millimeter wave terminal guidance sensor that can then do essentially air to ground radar mapping uh, of a target specific area looking for the radars, the tells, and or the support equipment to be able to hit those types of targets when the radar shuts down. Previous ARH or anti-radiation homing systems are, were designed to go towards continuously emitting radars, but they've discovered years ago that if they just turn off the radar, then the system becomes uh, ineffective. So the Navy went forward to go ahead and mature a air-to-ground radar, the millimeter wave radar terminal guidance package, and that essentially negates that shutdown environment for Argum. So Argum also comes with a control section that has geospecificity. Uh, essentially you can keep the Argum contained in a, an area of, of regard so that it doesn't fly outside of that, um, but it also then includes uh, avoidance zones within there or mandatory you must hit with an, this area also called it an impact zone. So lots of options associated with Argum from a geospecificity perspective but most importantly the ability to still engage targets in, in complicated electronic warfare scenarios. Argum ER will take that same seeker and the control section components and put them inside a new airframe that airframe will essentially remove the mid-body wings. We go back to aft actuators on the very back end of the actual missile itself. We have some strakes along the side. Those strakes are designed for lift, but also to reduce drag because this missile is all about range and speed. So a little bit heavier missile we anticipate in the future. It's gonna go more than double the range of the current system, but in the same time of flight to that, to that range. So a very, very fast missile. Uh, originally designed to be able to be placed on the U.S. Navy's F-18 fleet to include Super Hornets and Growlers, uh, but the Air Force in their latest fiscal year 20 budget documents have come forward in those documents and said they're joining the Navy's Argum ER program. Uh, they're aligning with them with three memorandums of agreement for requirements, program oversight, and execution. Um, essentially, they will then move forward based upon the documents language uh, with regards to armament interface unit so that the Argum ER can talk to the F-35 and be integrated onto that. Uh, they also talk about uh, a potential new warhead and fuses, and I can't believe you remember the last one, but uh, uh, they do have another additional target set that they're bringing into that type of an equation. So. The, uh, the bottom line is the, the Air Force has moved forward and in those budget documents have set aside some money over the next five years to continue to mature their concept, which was also previously known as the stand and attack weapon. Uh, so we fully anticipate that those two services will come together. The last thing I'd really like to talk about today is the service launch Argum options to where you could place an Argum along the shorelines, along your border areas, uh, on mobile types of vehicles that could be then data linked targets and or updated with targets to be able to launch from surface locations. Uh, that allows you what I would consider more freedom of maneuver and being able to engage the target without having to fly into an A2 AD environment and provides the combatant commander a different option with respect to engaging those types of threats. The Argon is already designed and in full rate production there are options that could be taken to possibly include Polish industry. Uh, unfortunately, when you start in introducing new manufacturers or locations, your costs increase. So I would say if they were going to buy a very large quantity, that may be an option to them. But in the quantities that we're looking at right now, we don't anticipate it would be economically feasible. There are options to include Polish industry with respect to depot level maintenance and or breakdown of subcomponents to be able to ship back if there's any types of failures, uh, ground training and support of those scenarios. We fully anticipate uh, working directly with the Polish industry on those scenarios. So 
Uh, Argam ER, again, uh, in development, don't have any information on industrial participation or uh, inclusion in those types of discussions, but we look forward to have those if, if indeed the U.S. Navy allows us to be able to move forward with them. I think that they already have an infrastructure for understanding the electronic order of battle that's in their backyard. Uh, that, that can help contribute to just a better understanding of the overall threat layout. But Argam really comes into a contained asset to where once you put it on a plane and you go out and fly with it, you'll be able to see the surface threats, you'll have the location, um, and essentially be able to reestablish that. So what the Polish military, I believe, really needs to do is a f fundamental movement forward is one, to continue moving forward with procuring the process or getting a better understanding of the pricing associated with uh, what's already been provided. Once they get that better understanding to move forward with that, once they sign that letter of offer and acceptance, then they would move into all the flow of information, the training, all those things that the U.S. Navy is going to most likely provide or industry can provide if the Polish uh, military desires that. Then we start getting into the education process, right? You start training uh, the maintainers, you start training the pilots, you start working with the aircraft integration teams, and that starts moving forward to when missiles are delivered. Uh, they can be tested off the airplane, launched, verification of the capability, and, and again, before that, the pilots will be trained in the functionality within the aircraft, but then knowing how to better do the mission planning as well. So that whole package would then come forward to be able to be presented to the Polish military uh, to have what I would consider competency with the weapon system prior to being able to go to a military type of a scenario.